Namaste and hello everyone. Welcome to the global collection launch at 100 this year. I'm joining in from the mountains of India here in uh, Dehradun and I am so excited to finally have this chance to share with you what I have been able to learn and harvest in these past few months. One of the most beautiful things about fear is that it's riddled with contradictions. As we prepare for the worst by stocking up more toilet paper, pasta packets and running to the grocery stores, we're hoping to build a safe future. And that hope along with that fear is a good concussion in understanding where we might be headed as a community. As somebody who for the last 11 years has documented people's stories, I had a first hand insight into what the new world as the Indian author Arundhati Roy calls it the portal might take us to i have been through my organization collecting life lessons and human wisdom for the past 11 years asking people what are they learning through the ordinary and the extraordinary circumstances of their life and in this pursuit i couldn't be more happier today to be joined by two such individuals who are part of the 7 billion people the world population 7 billion somewhere sounds like a good news only when you think that these 7 billion people also might be 7 billion perspectives and hold key to 7 billion solutions that we may not have acknowledged before so i am joined in today by george cowell and oni uh, both of them are incredible change makers educators who are facilitating what education in the dynamic of this pandemic might look like and so thank you george and oni for joining in this conversation today Uh, very very excited to have you. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting, guys, when the COVID pandemic hit and there was no more travels, and you know we saw news flooding in our screens, whether cell phones or television or newspapers. I had a life lesson come to me through all this experience, and the lesson was: crises don't reveal who we are but rather they give us a chance to craft who we can become because before this pandemic i was running from one project to another hopping from one flight to another and as i had what i call the unexpected pause of this lockdown i was able to recalibrate of what really matters and how i can cut down the noise so that is what it helps me now become and achieve and i'm curious to know george if you had a similar experience of this uh, covid-19 revealing of what you would want to now chase um, as covid chaos settles down yeah i guess there are two things um thank you thank you so much for having me on uh the first thing is when we started responding to the crisis in liberia and sierra leone as an organization we started producing radio and sms content for our partnerships with government in these two countries and we 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 set out to just work domestically and what we realized is that there was interest and appetite for the content we had all around the world and in the subsequent 6 to 7 months we've we've ended up working in partnerships in Zambia, India, Pakistan and with around 20 other countries um and five other governments uh, in a way that we just never anticipated so i think it's it's definitely changed um it's opened things up for for how we see our role and um and it's made us feel really excited about the possibilities of working with great partners all around the world. Um I think the second thing is that uh you know I was watching Elon Musk put a uh, a rocket into space and land a drone ship uh landed landed back on a drone ship a few months ago um uh, at the same time as we had millions hundreds of millions of children around the world who weren't getting any education and I guess it makes me realize that there's just a huge amount still to be done and it's hugely exciting to see all the innovations been taking place in the last 6 to 6 6 months but there's just so much more to do um so i'm i'm excited to see how that unfolds i love that you use the word excitement to uh you know kind of condense the last 7 months because that's really what the world needs it needs more hope and our hope is our knowledge uni has has the experience been similar for you and in your realm of work what has it allowed you to know better yeah thanks um sort of actually similar ideas than now what george was saying there that um we also as a company we sort of 
I think really, really nicely, we realized we need to embrace the change and sort of like not step away from the collision. And like we see that COVID is, has been shaking the society and education field and is still shaking everything that we can actually like use this momentum and the change to actually create something new and um, see new ways of doing things. We, we were just on a way of um, having uh, big deals with kindergartens and with, um, with learning centers around the country. And it was all uh, about having the lessons in a, in a classroom. And then uh, COVID happened, we realized, okay, slowly starting realizing this is not going to happen. We need to do something. And we sort of pivoted in a second. And somebody just said, like, why don't we do this remotely? And we're going, oh, why wouldn't we? And realized that with quite small adjustments, we could make, um, make our approach uh, exactly the same, but do it remotely. And we realized that we can actually now reach way more children and really empower them to explore the problems and um, we can actually reach more people this way. And um, also like just, just I was saying that um, this whole, whole shaping of the society, uh, I think it's also created this thing that, that even though COVID is really um, like physically separating people, I think it's also creating new ways of people to get in touch uh, and really to meet each other. And um, even in the beginning of this week, I was teaching a remote lesson to India. And I was sitting in the office on my own chair with my laptop. And I was having a really like actually having a moment with children on the other side of the world. And in the end of the session, they, they, um, they say how they enjoyed it. And they shout, I love you, ma'am. And I'm like almost shouting back and having these experiences we wouldn't have without. So really embracing the change, I think, is something that um, we've learned, definitely. Absolutely. And I love that you say it's, it's been almost revelatory for you. It's not something that you have strategized for years. COVID has allowed us to create new choreographies and dance new dances and in many ways allowed us to unlearn a lot of things. And that's what I would love, uh, George, only uh, both of you to highlight and share with us you know, we talk about learning so much in education that we forget almost what can we unlearn. And the pandemic taught us that we need to unlearn how we taught, like Uni mentioned. It doesn't have to be physical, it can be online as well. We also have to unlearn that our children are not just beneficiaries, but they are collaborators. We have to unlearn that technology is just a mere resource. It's a very important stakeholder. Are there unlearnings that you have and, uh, you know, that you would like to share. It's at least have something to do with unlearning. And this is something, it's not really 2020 specific, but something I've had since, since I was a child. And my, my mother used to always tell me to, that there's no point in regretting anything you've done. Like you can, you can think that, oh, I, I could have done something differently. But when I made the choice to do something, was it half a minute ago or a decade ago, I did it then with that information that I had at that point with that surroundings, with everything that was happening then. And, um, and now I can think that I could have done something different, but then I didn't have that information. And I, people don't consciously make bad choices. You make the best choice possible in that moment where you are. And I think this year, um, there's been a lot of situations where I start doubting whether I did the right choice. Did I go and meet my, should I, should I have gone and meet my parents, um, the elderly, and like, should I go and meet them? And at the point when I did, I did it with the best intentions possible. So I think like having this sort of acceptance um, there is a really um, powerful lesson that I've, I've really liked had with me the whole year. Thank you for sharing that. George, could you, could you recollect one? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's so much unlearning. I guess one thing that we, we realize now when we reflect back that we, we weren't getting all right was we operate across a number of a number of countries, and 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 those con those teams just didn't interact in the way that they should have done previous to this crisis. And it's it really forced us to to bring the the team closer together. It really thought us to think about ways of using technology. And so I guess it's really important going forward that we don't we don't lose that um, what we what we generated from this crisis. And that that feels to me to be most important. So it's more of a reflection of what we weren't getting right and what we've learned and make sure that. Yeah, we hold on to some of these things that we've uh, developed in the past six months. That's, that's, that's powerful because now everybody knows 
better. And it's a personal choice almost after the pandemic gets over and all its shades get over. Do you choose and decide to live that authentic essence of what you felt during the seven months, the togetherness, the connectedness? So that's, that's powerful. Thank you, Uni and George, and to everybody watching. I think more than ever before in our lives, we have been brought together by a global crisis for global commitment to how we teach, how we learn, and how we unlearn. And perhaps, uh, as Albert Campus, the great Nobel laureate said, you know, the love of life comes with the despair of life. And hopefully, through the work that you do with Rising on Air or only you do at Science Day Kids, I hope we are able to build the next generation that believes we did our best to sow seeds that will allow them to have a, a fruit-laden forest of possibilities. So thank you so much, George and Oni and everybody watching. And back to the studio for the Global Collection launch. Thank you.